Let's spend a little time right now talking about bond prices, bonds in general, what they are, how they work, and how the price of bonds are related to interest rates. And we'll see they have an inverse relationship that when interest rates are rising, bond prices fall, and when interest rates are falling, bond prices rise. Okay? Think back for a minute now. In terms of the tools of monetary policy, one of the tools we talked about was the Federal Reserve and the Federal Open Market Committee and their open market operations. That was the Fed moving into the market, buying or selling bonds. And what we want to remember, we had that chain of causation, right? We said a change in the money supply would then affect interest rates, which would then affect consumption spending and investment spending. Those would have a multiplier effect through the, throughout the economy, and they would then affect aggregate demand. We sometimes call this the transmission mechanism, the way in which monetary policy is transmitted into the economy and has an effect on aggregate demand. So what we want to talk about now is one of those monetary policy efforts where the Fed, let's say in this case, decides to buy bonds, just to review. If the Fed buys bonds, they're going into the open market, they're, let's say they're talking to other commercial banks, and they're saying, I want to buy your bonds, you give me the bonds, and I, in return, will give you money. And they'll pay an attractive enough price for it that the banks will be willing to, to sell their bonds. And so when the Fed is buying bonds, it's putting money into the banks, and as a result, the money supply is going to increase. Now, parenthetically, when we go through this, it's a sort of a static model. What we really mean is the growth rate of the money supply. We'll speed it up or we'll slow it down. But we can think of it for right now in terms of just increasing the money supply. And we know if the Fed buys bonds and increases the money supply, banks have more money, they need to lend it out, so they reduce their interest rates to attract more borrowers. More borrowers come in, borrow, and spend, and the ultimate effect is more consumption spending, more investment spending, and an increase in aggregate demand. So when the Fed is buying, they're trying to stimulate the economy. Likewise, when they're selling, they're going to contract the economy. They're going to reduce aggregate demand. So let's go on for a minute then. It's just kind of a review. Let's talk about what is a bond. We hear the term a lot. Um, think of this phrase. I give you my bond not to try to escape. I'm a prisoner of yours in a war. I give you my bond. What is that? And a bond is a promise. Uh, if, in, in some occupations... Uh, if you handle money for your employer, you may be a bonded employee. And that means they've basically taken out an insurance policy that says if you steal money and run away, the insurance policy will compensate the company for that. When I was a newspaper boy of, of about 14 years old, I handled sometimes up to $100, $150 a month collecting monies for my papers and then sending it to the newspaper company, and they bonded me as an employee. So a bond is a promise, or a promise to pay in this case. In this case, the bond, we'll call it an IOU, IOU money. But here's the way the bond is set up to work. Okay? Um, for a corporation or for a government entity, uh, the federal government, state governments, local governments, school boards, water management districts, whatever you've got, they generally have the authority to issue bonds. That is, they have the authority to borrow money. So when you say you issue bonds, basically you're just constructing a loan, okay? And here's how it works. I want to borrow some money. Uh, maybe I'm a private corporation. <clears throat> Conceptually, what I want to do is I'm going to print up some bonds, okay? This is the instrument. I'm going to print them in certain denominations we call the par value. The bonds we'll use in this class are always going to have a par value of $1,000, it's very commonly used, and it makes the math pretty simple, okay? So if I wanted to borrow $100,000, I would print up 100 of these $1,000 bonds. I would go to an investment banker and say, find me some people who are willing to buy my bonds, that is, to loan me money. And here's the terms. 
And this will be set up in the way the bond is constructed or even printed on the bond if it happens to be a, a printed version. Um, the issuer, ABC Company, promises to pay, remember, this is a promise, promises to pay, let's say, 5% interest every year until the year, let's say, 20 years in the future, which for us would be 2032 right now. And then it's signed by somebody important, Mickey Mouse. It's got a corporate seal attached to it. And boy, it's official. And the way this is supposed to work, in theory, is that you give me $1,000, and in return for that, I give you 5% interest on that $1,000 every year until the year 2032. Now, the 5% is called the coupon rate. The coupon rate. That's fixed. The par value is fixed. The coupon rate is fixed. They don't change. The coupon, the term coupon rate comes from that many years ago with the old bonds, they would print them with a border around them. And the border would be divided up into little segments called coupons. And basically, you would clip off one of the coupons each year to get your interest. Clip off the coupon, write down your name and address, and send it into the company. <coughs> Pardon me. And they would send you your $50 interest. So this bond pays an annual interest that is equal to always, always, the par value times the coupon rate. Par times coupon. Which in this case is $1,000 times 5%. So this bond pays $50 per year to the bondholder. <coughs> now, if you've had some accounting, you may recall that, that this can get pretty complicated. If they're paying the interest every quarter or semi-annually, you had to do some calculations. We're not sticking with that kind of bond right now. <coughs> Darn it. All right. What do we know for sure about this bond? It's a $1,000 par, and it's going to pay $50 interest every year. But those are fixed. But that's, that's it. Because, you know, ideally, you gave me $1,000. I send you $50 a year. Well, let's turn it around a minute. Suppose I bought this bond for $1,000, and now, today, bonds that are very similar to this, same kind of risk, same kind of bonds generally, suppose those bonds today, for whatever changes in the, in the environment, are now paying 8%. Would you pay me $1,000 for this one? If so, there's an economics term for that, you remember? It's called stupid, right? Why would you pay me $1,000 to get 5% when instead you could go buy one of these new bonds, pay $1,000, and get 8%? So interest rates have gone up. And what has happened to the value of my bond? Nobody wants to give me $1,000 for it. The bond value is going to fall. Now, here's how we explain that. The return on your bond, your return on investment, or what we call the yield, the yield on the bond is going to be the annual interest you receive, that was at $50, divided by the price you pay. So if you paid $1,000 and you got $50 every year, it has a yield of 5%. Now, quick parenthetical notice for those of you that have had accounting. When, when we teach you how to establish the value or price of a bond in accounting and finance, we have you doing present value calculations of an annuity and of a, of a lump sum and adding them together. and It's a kind of a complex operation to say, here's what the bond is worth. Well, this is the same principle as those other bonds, but this is a unique bond. The bonds where we're talking about usually in accounting and finance have maturity dates like the 2032. This is a particular type of bond called a perpetuity. It's a bond that never really matures. It pays that $50 forever and ever. Amen. We do that because this makes it easy, okay? But the principle behind the uh, relationship between interest rates and bond prices is going to be very well illustrated with this kind of simpler model. So here's what's going on. You look around in the market, you're standing there with your $1,000 or so, and you're saying, hmm, what bond should I buy? Well, I like that 8% bond. That's a whole lot more attractive than Strickland's 5% bond. And then I'm sitting there holding this 
you know, one thousand dollar five percent coupon bond, and I'm saying, well, I want to sell it. I need to raise some cash. How much can I get for it? Well, I'll have to do something to my bond where it also yields eight percent, just like the other bonds in the market. So how can I make my bond yield an eight percent return, like the new bonds are out there today? That's pretty easy. If I want the yield to be eight percent, and I know my bond pays fifty dollars, then I just calculate the price. In this case, the price would be fifty dollars divided by eight percent. I don't know if y'all do fraction conversions anymore, right? But that's going to be five eighths or point six two five times a thousand. The bond's going to be worth six hundred and twenty-five dollars. So if I want to sell my 5% coupon bond in a market where yields are at 8%, I've got to sell it for $625. You with that okay? Be careful with it, okay? But think about this. If I paid $1,000 for that bond when I first purchased it, and interest rates since that, since that time have gone from 5% to 8%, they've gone up. What's happened to the value or the price of my bond? It's gone down from 1000 to 625 so in principle, if you buy in bonds and interest rates start up, you're going to lose. Now today, interest rates are extremely low. And so a lot of folks are looking at bonds saying, well, the yield on bonds is so low today that if you buy one, about the only chance interest rates moving anywhere is for them to move up, somewhere maybe down in the future, maybe not right away. But if bond prices, prices ever, I'm sorry, if interest rates ever start rising, then my bonds are going to lose value. So a lot of people are kind of scared of them right now. Let's turn this around to another calculation real quick. Suppose we said that today, remember I had a 5% coupon, $1,000 par bond. Suppose we said that uh, today interest rates have fallen to 3%. Bonds, just like this one, similar risk, perpetuities, are, are now yielding, returning only 3%. Well, what would be the value of my bond? And so I'll plug it in and I'll say, well, to have a 3% yield, given the fact that my bond pays $50, what is it worth? What's the price of the bond? Now, again, recall, where did the $50 come from? That's the coupon rate times the par value. That was on the original bond. It was printed on the bond. It never changes. So that $50 is constant. What can change is the price of the bond, and that will cause the yield to change. So if we do this, we do a little math, we say, well, then the price is... $50 divided by 0 0.03, right? And what do we get? Looks like about five-thirds to me, one and two-thirds. Looks like my bond's going to be worth $1,666.67. What happened? Interest rates fell from 5% to 3%, and the value of my bond, the bond price, rose. That's what we're after. One last calculation, okay? Here's... Uh, maybe something a little more interesting. Suppose you had um, a 6% coupon bond. It's got a par of 1,000. It's a perpetuity, so don't, we don't worry about any maturity dates. And suppose that you could, you could sell this bond and it had a price of $1,200. It's a thousand dollar par. Now, what's happened? The value of the bond has gone up. The price of the bond is higher than par. If the price went up, what happened to interest rates or yields? Well, they must have gone down. What is this bond going to yield? Once again, the yield is the annual interest over par. Oh, I'm sorry, over the price. We don't know the yield. We're going to calculate that. How much interest does this bond pay? It pays 6% times $1,000. Coupon times par, annual interest. The annual interest then is $60. The price is $1,200. What do you get? The answer is that prices rose and interest rates, which were about 6% at the time the bond was issued, have fallen to 5%. And so you want to bring your calculator to the exams. You want to be ready to do these kind of calculations. They may be a little bit more complex. I mean, we might say I've got a 7 and 3 eighths percent bond, and it's selling for 
$1114.21. What's the yield on a bond? I would expect you to be able to do that. That's just math. Right now, what I want you to know is the concept. Okay? So once again, when the Fed enters the market and starts buying bonds, what happens in the economy? They're going to buy the bonds, let's say, from the banks. What are they going to give the banks in return? Cash, money. So they're creating or putting more money into the economy. When the Fed buys, the money supply goes up and interest rates fall. Okay? If you want to think of it another way, this isn't important if you want to do, don't want to do it this way, but think of it. If the Fed's out buying more bonds, it's going to bid the bond prices up. And as bond prices rise, interest rates are going to fall. Get comfortable with those tools of monetary policy, particularly open market operations and, and how they affect interest rates. Okay? Thanks.